Corporate psychopaths who are about 1% of the population. Here are three individuals. Can you identify who the corporate psychopath is out of these three individuals, yes or no? To further elaborate on this point shows how creating psychologically safe workplaces can save thousands of lives and contribute $1.5 trillion to the North American economy. More studies like this need to be conducted in other countries too. Another expert analysis by Catherine Matisse Sundell, international bullying expert, is quoted as saying, psychological power imbalance, that can be equated to domestic violence. Another significant comparison stated that apparently the rate of the CEOs is similar to the prison service population. There is a lot of work to be done in the area of corporate psychopaths and for businesses to take this issue more seriously and fully understand its impact on organisations and their employees. When employees are being targeted as open prey by individuals who have no understanding of empathy, then organisations cannot ignore the corporate bullying. These individuals should not be promoted to senior positions, putting other employees at high risk and deliberately affecting their mental well-being with no apparent safeguards in place, which leads to a destructive, toxic and dangerous working culture where legislation is breached away from the healthy best practices and duty of care. If an organisation is honest to its mission statements and policies and if it takes psychological bullying seriously and respects their employees in this age of equality, then corporate psychopaths should be rooted out of organisations and recognised as the main destructive force within and never be allowed to grow. Every employee's well-being is important. No one signs an, signs an employment contract to be tortured or suffer in silence by corporate psychopaths. An organisation has to look after everybody's well-being, not just the selected few. No large multinationals, large corporations and business organisations, etc. can exist on their own. They need their employees in order to survive and be functional. Therefore, the responsibility to look after each and every employee should be done without bias or discrimination because we all matter. Every person's well-being should be of equal importance and value. And the right to work in a safe workplace culture is every employee's basic right, not a novelty. An employee cannot neglect their most valuable asset and resources, which are their employees. This equation far outweighs the negativity and manipulation traits a self-interested corporate psychopath has to offer an organisation. A corporate psychopath never has the best interest of the core value system or the mission statements. Instead, their sole existence is just to develop, progress and nurture their own career and egos whilst damaging and putting other employees at high risk. The question is, why is this still allowed to continue in the 21st century? For example, in 2020, this culture of corporate bullying needs to be addressed urgently and stopped rather than be ignored. Because who matters? You matter. No company should be the oxygen in which corporate psychopaths can survive politics by Samrina Khan.